out because only if you're able to kill an animal and make it a human in the sacrifice, then only your sacrifice is concerned as you get punya also because of that. You get merit. The animal's pain is not considered at that time. In fact, it becomes a human, more intelligent, and, and it's allowed to become a new person. But here, in this one, so the animals are supposed to be killed here. So it's the same, that same big wooden thing could kill. Whatever hidden, whatever Vedas he was using, nothing was happening because the Kshap was the son of Lord Brahma. So he had to be killed with the uh, animal killer. So the animal killer, that wooden device, is what he took. Upon seeing the action of Veerabhadra, okay, he took the opportunity of this facility to behead the Kshap. Upon seeing the action of Veerabhadra, the party of Lord Shiva was pleased and cried out joyfully all the Buddhas, ghosts and the demons that had come here tumultuous sound. They took their huge conscious and they blew it loudly and all the sounds everywhere going around, all the devas had fallen on the floor. Sadhu Vadastata Tesham Karmatattasya Pashyagam Bhutat Preta Pishachanam Anyesham Tat Vipadhyayah Veerabhadra then took the head with great anger and threw it into the southern side of the Sadhuva fire. What is southern? Southern is Yama. So this head directly goes to Yama. So then offering as, uh, as an oblation to Shiva. Because the offer was not oblated to Shiva, he took this head itself and threw it. So that this becomes an oblation for Shiva. After setting fire to the whole arena, all the sacrificial sages, everybody was set to fire and they all were burning for what they had done. Everybody was exactly given the punishment. Not a single person who had done mistakes was stopped, everybody else was destroyed. Both Lord, now we come to the next one, where Brahma went to satisfy Lord Shiva. He said that, please O oh Lord, protect us. I'm very, very sorry for all of this. And then they started saying all of that and then Lord Brahma and all other demigods saw an 800 mile high banyan tree. 800 mm. miles high banyan tree. Which means uh, too much actually, 800 miles. So that much high abandoned tree, under that Shiva was sitting down and surrounded by exalted personalities like Kuvera, the treasurer. He was having a lot of gold and all the money of the Devas he was keeping with himself and he was sitting there and all the Sanat Kumaras were sitting there. Um, Sanat Kumara also are four baby gods. They actually are billions of years old, but they still look like babies. So they all were sitting there and they were chanting mantras legally. <laughs> so then Lord Shiva looked as grave as an eternal type. He was very angry at the time. So he looked at eternal type and he was not even satisfied by anything. Then finally, somehow they satisfied him and Brahma fixed the head of a goat for Daksha, whose head was cut off. So Brahma fixed the head of a goat because that's what he deserved. And then with that goat head, Daksha started praying to Lord Shiva. Next. Now we come to the story of Dhruva. You may have known about this story. In which uh, there are two wives of um, Uttanapada, a very great king. Suniti and Suruchi. So, they had Dhruva and Uttama as their sons. Dhruva was the son of um, Suniti, who was the low lower king of Uttanapada. Suruchi was more beautiful, therefore the king uh, started being with her only and none of the time going to Suniti. <coughs> and his son was also regarded as nothing. Dhruva was just not allowed to sit on the lap or on the throne of the king. And when he tried to sit on the lap, Suruchi said, My dear child, because you are not born from my womb, you do not deserve to sit on either the king's lap or his throne. If you at all desire to rise to the throne, then you must undergo severe austerities to satisfy the supreme personality of God and Narayana. Then when you have achieved this favor, you shall have to take the, you know, your next birth from my womb. Then only you can sit on his throne. This is what was spoken by uh, um, Uttar, uh, uh, um, Suruchi. And then Dhruva was sent away from there. He started crying because of hearing such words from Suruchi. Both the, uh, actually Dhruva was elder to Uttanapada. Therefore he has the right to sit on the throne. But because Suruchi is the more beautiful king and the principal queen of, um, of Uttanapada, she and her son had the right 
to be with the king, not Dhruva and Suniti is what was the law at that time. But then what happened was, Dhruva went to his mother and started crying. His mother said that go sit in the forest, just joking like that because she was also crying and she was thinking what to do. So she said like that. But Dhruva took that seriously. He went to the forest and he started studying there. After some time he started doing penance. When he was doing penance, Narada came and taught him. Om Namo Narayanaya says Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya say this and keep doing penance. He was just five years old at that time and he was doing in the forest. He just ate fruits for the first month. Next month he started just um, not having any water and then like this he kept on moving forward and finally he did not consume anything. After that he kept on doing penance. Then Vishnu came. Uttarapada was grieved. Uh, he was very uh, uh, feeling very very bad that he had done this to his son. And then he couldn't find his son because he, his son was in the middle of the forest, the fierce forest. The, the father was himself very scared to get inside that spot. Next we come.